<laughs> okay. I'm laughing because I just have so many questions. <laughs> um, I was actually going to film this in my cute little spot in my bedroom, but <clears throat> I unfortunately had a really crazy day and week. <sighs> if you're watching my vlogs at all, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully they're not too boring. I'll link you to some in below. I'm kind of getting over this like cold that I had to. But um, my bullfrog has been sick and you could see in my last vlog giving her some medicine. And so I was back and forth to the vet um, and the vet is an hour away. So that like took up a lot of my week. That and just like organizing. I also took in a foster bearded dragon which I'll be putting on my animal channel. If you follow that, you'll see that there. It's... um. It's a lot. So I was going to film this in my like cozy little seat that I got all set up that you saw in my vlog and it's just too late at night. So the only place to film with bright enough lights is in here in my studio. So we are going to do a mask while we answer some questions. Um, it is like 8 p.m. at night and honestly, I just want to relax and like take a load off. So I'm going to be doing the Pixie Rose Remedy Mask. This is Nourishing Toning Jelly. It's like just kind of looks like jizz a little bit, but are you planning to breastfeed? This question along with can I breastfeed with breast implants has been kind of like a really big question. And I did talk to my doctor. This is so cold. <laughs> and as you can tell by my sweater, I'm, uh, I'm cold right now also. So this is whew, really cold. Uh, so I talked to my doctor about this before I got my breast augmentation done. So there, as you know, there are different ways that you can put breast implants in and through the nipple is one of those ways, through the armpit is one of those ways, through the belly button, through, there's just different ways. And I did right under, which is the most direct way to do it and easiest way to do it. As far as placement goes, I just didn't want there to be any room for like mistake as far as placement goes and things like that. And I didn't want to go through the nipple because I didn't want to risk like messing up my nipples, I guess. And I also talked to her about breastfeeding and she basically told me that you have a, I mean, there's always a chance when you get a boob job done that you may not be able to do that, but it's pretty rare. And she said, if you went through your nipple for the implants, you would have a higher chance of not being able to breastfeed. So I do plan on breastfeeding and um, I'm hopeful that there will be no issues with my implants. That's the plan anyway. So um, yeah, hopefully there's no issues, but I do plan on breastfeeding kind of not as long as I can, but we'll see what feels right. But I definitely um, personally think that that's important for my child and that's something that I really want to do. So it was funny, my mom the other day texted me, she's like, don't feel like you like have to, don't feel like you have to like breastfeed. And I was like, I don't feel like I have to, like I, I want to, like I think that that will be the best thing for her. So that's what I want to do. So hopefully there's no issues and we can breastfeed just fine. This boob is, um, I've been doing, uh, by the way, I don't know if you guys will be interested in this, but I saw Jen, I'm doing it. I thought it was a great idea. I've been kind of, um, doing like a little video diary each week of the pregnancy and kind of talking like a little bit about like changes and how I'm feeling and what's going on. Um, I just thought even just for myself, it would be cool to like look back on, I just ate a huge dinner and I'm like sitting. So it's like making my like throat make all these noises. Ugh. And the one pair of maternity leggings that I purchased started, the seam started to tear a week after I was wearing them. So I literally don't have any maternity stuff except for these jeans right now. I think I got these at Target. So yeah, my throat is making so many weird noises right now. Um, but this boob in particular has like a lot of veins and I don't know if that 
is a foreshadowing of the fact that this one's gonna be like having more milk and producing more milk, I don't really know, but I haven't had any leakage happen as of yet and supposedly at 23 weeks that can start. I've read on one of those little apps, so. What are you most nervous for postpartum wise? So it's hard to narrow it down because I'm nervous about a lot of things. I'm nervous that this house won't be in a comfortable enough like position yet, like or state to be comfortable. I've already wanted to start nesting and I haven't been able to because I don't have the space to do it right now. Um, and with the remodel, half of our stuff that was used to be in the other parts of the house are now like all pushed back here. So that's one thing. Um, I would say I am nervous about my busy lifestyle. Like I don't even have a baby yet. And I mean, I do, but not out of the womb. And I already am finding myself not having time to work out and like just just not even having time to like make food for myself, you know, cause I'm just so freaking busy with like the house, the animals, the remodel, just all the stuff. I mean, look how, look at my hair. This is, this is not someone who has time for things. <laughs> so that I'm ner nervous about. And then I would say one of the bigger things physically is my body. Um, you know, I wasn't where I wanted to be like weight and body wise, before I got pregnant. So I am a little concerned at like what my body is going to look like. It's going to be definitely an adjustment, you know, um, getting over the fact that I now have some stretch marks on this boob and just what my stomach's going to look like. And like down there, um, I'm really nervous to poop for the first time. That's another thing. I'm just like, if I have to have stitches down there, like that sounds so horrifying and so scary to like go to the bathroom for the first time. So that's something I'm nervous about as well. And just the overall lifestyle change, I guess, like postpartum, like if, if I have any postpartum depression, like I, I don't really know a lot about that. I need to do some more research, but like, I'm just nervous about like just the lifestyle change. Like I'm going to wake up and there's going to be like a human that I need to care for. And I'm already very busy. And so I'm, I'm just concerned that it'll just be a little bit of a lifestyle shock. And I, and I think it will. Um, but I kept putting off, you know, having kids. And then for the obvious, my ex-husband didn't want them um, with me. And so <laughs> I was just like, oh, one day, one day. And then I was just like, I can't make any excuses anymore. I'm 33. I'm turning 33. I just turned 33. And but at the time I was thinking to myself, I'm in my 30s now. Like I got to get going on this. So yeah, I would say those are the things I'm most nervous about. I know that was like a really bleh answer and there was a lot to it, but that's kind of everything. Someone said, will you breastfeed and can it alter your implants in any way? So as far as implants go, when it comes to breastfeeding, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say everyone's completely different with their bodies as far as like what breastfeeding will do. I think it depends a lot on genetics and it depends a lot on like how your body hangs on to things. My body grips things really well as I found out with my first implants that I had removed. Um, they just stayed up here like cause they were textured. So I have a feeling that my boobs will look even more natural after I breastfeed. And Nick said the same thing to me. He was like, I think your boobs are gonna look like even more natural after you breastfeed because they'll have like a little bit more of a natural, like not sag, but like sag to them, if that makes sense. I'm one month behind you. What are you getting versus not getting? So, and she said um, like vibrating chair, swing, etc. Honestly, I'm pretty lost in that department. Um, on top of being very busy, it's very confusing to me and there is like a gadget for everything and I don't know what I really need. So I've been taking a lot of tips from you guys. One thing that I'm definitely getting is a, Nick and I were literally just talking about this at dinner. We are going to get a 
a chair that attaches to like a counter so that we can use it at our own um, islands. And then Nick and I love to eat like at the bar at restaurants. Like it's one of our favorite things because we both used to be bartenders and we like to be able to interact directly with the bartender and order drinks or whatever. So yeah, there's gonna be a, <laughs> did you bring a baby to a bar? Yeah, there's gonna be um, that and we also, are on my, I'll have to go, I'll make a video maybe if you guys are interested in seeing what's on my um, baby registry. I can also link you guys to it so you guys can kind of pull some of your own links if you want and if you have any suggestions for me to add to it, I am so open because I have never done this before and this is the wild west for me. So I can do that if you guys want. Let me know if you guys want a video on like what's on my baby registry, but um, I also have a blackout tent on there, one that goes like over the pa like a pack and play or just whatever, like whatever you have them in, like you can put it over it because we will be doing a lot of camping, a lot of traveling with um, our baby and we want her to be able to get sleep. And if she's anything like me, she needs to pitch fricking black when she sleeps. I need like no sound and pitch black. <laughs> So that's definitely going on there. And then I have um, a baby Bjorn on there, I think. Is that the one that like sits on the ground, like kind of rocks a little bit? You can like hit it with your foot and it kind of like bobs. I'm definitely getting one of those. And then something that I've been trying to keep an eye out for is a rolling bassinet because we're gonna have hardwood throughout our entire house. And I was just thinking, like, I move around the house so much on a daily basis. Like, I swear I get my steps in just in this house. I will go from here to the laundry room, to the garage, to, like, to cook. And then I'll come check on something on my computer. And, like, I am all over the house. So, short of strapping her to me, um, I thought it would be really helpful to be able to, like, roll, <laughs> like, roll her ass around the house, you know? Like, in a little bassinet that has like wheels and some of the ones that I've seen that I have on my registry even has like a little storage thing underneath, which I thought was really cool. And so then if, I, if I'm cooking, I can like roll her into the kitchen, obviously if she's sleeping or just hanging out, laying there. Um, and then I could roll her in to watch TV with me. I could roll her back to the laundry room if I'm folding. So I don't know, I just thought that that was pretty cool. Again, I don't know anything about having kids, but <laughs> it just seemed handy. Uh, I'm gonna get a rocking chair for the nursery for sure. I don't know where to get like a cute one though. Do you guys know where they have like cute ones? I've been trying to like figure out like like where I could get one that like matches my overall theme. I'll link you guys to my baby Pinterest board as well because now that the secret's out that it is a girl, uh, I can share it with you guys. <laughs> but I have a bunch of baby stuff on there, like cute nursery stuff, like nursery decor, cute outfits, um, postpartum this, that, and the other. So as far as like what I'm gonna get, that's like for sure what I'm getting. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. <laughs> no one told me my vagina was going to swell up. Couldn't walk right. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Reusable diapers or disposable ones? This is a really good question. So I haven't really made that decision yet. I have kind of slightly delved into the world of exploring reusable diapers. Uh, Nick is on board for that. He thinks it's a great idea. I honestly might try both and see what works. I am all for less waste in the environment and saving the environment and all of that good stuff. But I also am very busy and want to use what will work for us best. So I don't, I don't really know. I'm not really sure about that. I know there are services that will pick up and clean for you, but like, I kind of live out in the middle of nowhere in San Diego, so I don't know if they will come out here. So I don't know if you guys have like any tips on anything that I'm answering or you want to give your two cents because um, you've experienced it before or you have like good input. I'd love to hear it. And I'm sure everyone else would too that's reading the comments. But yeah, I, I don't really know on that one. Are you going to post your registry so we can spoil your baby? That is so thoughtful and just so sweet. Uh, yeah, let me know. Um, let me know. <clears throat> Let me know uh, if you guys wanna see a video on that. But yeah, I can link you guys, maybe I can link you guys to that 
um, in that video just so you can see what, you know, uh, I've got on there in case you needed any ideas. It sounds like a lot of you guys are pregnant with me, which is really cool. Um, so maybe we can help each other out. <laughs> Controversial, but will you will you vaccinate your baby when they are born? So, um, I mean, I have, I think yes. Um, I will not be doing the COVID vaccine because there's not enough historical history, his historical history on what that does and the effects of that long term. So that's not something that I'm open to. But um, I like had all those vaccines when I was little and I don't see anything wrong with it. So yeah, um, we at this moment have every intention of doing all of the vaccines that Nick and I had as a child. Now they have a lot of vaccines I've heard, just like a ton. So I need to do research on some of those other ones, but you know, I have my vaccine record literally on my phone and, uh, like from when I was little and I, I got all the stuff. I got the chicken pox and you know, all that good stuff. So I don't see a reason not to. Okay, so maybe I'm really stupid, but there's a couple questions here about colostrum. How do you feel about colostrum and will you try and harvest? I don't really know what they mean by harvesting my colostrum. Colostrum, if you don't know, I've literally just learned this recently, is what comes out of your boobs before your milk comes in. It's like follows your baby being born. And it says it's a nutrient rich fluid produced by female mammals immediately after giving birth is loaded with immune growth and tissue repair factors. Um, so I don't know about harvesting it, but I'm assuming my baby will be drinking it immediately following birth. So if there's something I'm missing there, let me know. Cause maybe I am. Are you going to puree your own baby foods? Um, absolutely. Yeah. I, uh, I'm kind of like a naturopathic kind of medicine loving type of person. I think that pretty much anything we need to get our bodies alkaline and healthy and to fix pretty much any ailment under the sun comes from our food. And a long time ago, like a decade ago, I watched a lot of documentaries about forks over knives and like just how food is our medicine. And so... I am a big fan of like making everything from scratch and like kind of staying away from like canned things and pouched things as much as possible. I just think it's better to have fresh, but I don't think it's to say that I'm not ever going to have them as a supplemental type of, you know, snack or something. But I do plan on for the most part using our beautiful new kitchen and like cooking everything from scratch. And I think it'll be good actually because it'll force me to even eat healthier because ugh, I have no kitchen right now. So I haven't been able to like steam my broccoli or my cauliflower and things like that. Like I usually do. So I think when I'm making her food, I can like before I season it and all that kind of stuff, um, puree it, make baby food and then make my own food. So I think they'll kind of go hand in hand. Don't set high expectations for anything, literally anything. <laughs> I feel like I don't, I have, yeah, I don't think I have any expectations. I don't even know what to expect, to be honest. Here is a great question. Has it impacted your sex life? Yes, but some of that's probably my attitude and my mood swings, honestly. <laughs> it's not cute to be a bitch. <laughs> uh... Sex life. Okay, so apparently Nick claims it's the the espresso that I drink, and this is very TMI, and that's kind of what you always get from me. So if you're brand new to my channel and you've never seen my face before, I, on pretty much every platform that I have, am pretty like outspoken, and I don't really have a filter, and I kind of just say what comes to mind. And so this is going to be another one of those moments because I just don't have any shame or hide anything. Like, <laughs> so... Nick thinks it's the espresso that I drink and the coffee that makes me taste different down there. I personally think that it's pregnancy because I was fine before and apparently I taste a little different now. So I'm going to guess it's all of the chemical changes and all of the stuff going on like in my body that's causing that. But let's just say um, I he hasn't gone down there with his mouth for quite a while and it's pretty sad because he's 
freaking amazing at that. Um, and then as far as sex in general, um, I feel like it's been a lot less about me and more about him <laughs> because I'm finding it hard to like actually like have an orgasm. It feels weird in my stomach a little bit. And then especially if I can feel her moving, I'm totally distracted. So I've been kind of just taking care of myself, but in those ways, yes, it definitely has affected my sex life. And in the beginning, when my nipples were really, really sensitive, it was difficult because I didn't want him to touch them like at all. I was like, you can look, but don't touch. So that was a little difficult as well. So I think all of those things are kind of like the ways that it has changed. You guys hear my throat? What kind of discharge are you having? So in the beginning, um, I was having like discharge and every time I would feel it, cause we as women can feel discharge when it comes out, whether you're pregnant or not. Like you know when it's coming out, like you feel it. <laughs> Almost like a period rush or gush. Rush, gush, whatever you wanna call it. Um, in the beginning, because I had lost a twin or whatever that was, um, I had like old blood that would come out in my discharge and it freaked me out every time I felt the discharge because I kept thinking that it might be blood, but you can kind of tell the difference between like pure, like miscarriage type blood. It kind of gushes out and will drip down your leg. Uh, if you have that sort of a miscarriage, you could also have a missed miscarriage like I had months and months ago, but, um, it had like old blood in it. So it would like look, it would like have a color to it, you know, like dark, a dark brown tint to it, which I wasn't a fan of. And it would happen when I would pee too. And now it's just like, it almost like literally looks like this mask. Like, yeah, it kind of looks like, like this mask. It's kind of like blown out, I think. But yeah, it, it's just white. It's just white. And I pretty much like have it all throughout the day, so. I don't know if that's normal. I think it is. Will you vlog your labor and delivery? That is some of my favorite YouTube content. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I'm i planning on it. I better have as many batteries charged as possible. So I always like kind of went back and forth about that. Like, because when I see people's on YouTube, I'm like, how much is too much like to share? You know what I mean? Because like, when you do this for a living, not much of your life is private. Like you get to decide how much you want to keep private, you know, but, um, I was just kind of wondering myself, like what's too invasive? Like what's too much for Nick? Like what's, you know, like where do you draw the line? But honestly, I think it's a beautiful thing and I think it's pretty cool to document it. And I'm like, I'm an open book. Like I, I don't really keep secrets. I don't like it. It's hard. I can't lie. So I just like think I will, but I also am still a little unsure about my birth plan because that will have to be probably its own video. So if you guys want to hear about that, I saw a question in here about it, but I just didn't want to like dive into that right now because there's a lot to unpack and a lot to talk about. And I really would like your guys' opinions on it too, because a lot of you are moms and a lot of you have done all the different births, you know? So I wanted to wait and see, but like my initial thought was like that I wanted to have my baby at home in a pool of water, but we live so far from a hospital that Nick's not really comfortable with that. And I feel kind of the same way. Like if I, if something were to go wrong and we're an hour away from the hospital in traffic, for instance, I would just never forgive myself if something did go wrong, even though it's very rare. So it crossed my mind to rent an Airbnb and like near the hospital and do like a home birth there. I just like the idea of laying flat on a table, pushing a baby out of my hoo-ha sounds like the most unnatural thing I've ever heard of. And I would like to be in a pool squatting. So I said I wasn't gonna answer that, but then I kind of did. So point is, I don't know the setup for where I'm gonna be having her. So I, I don't know. I, but I, I think I will be vlogging it as much as possible. Um, I think I'm gonna have to rely on Nick for a lot of that and uh, his vlogging skills are usually pretty good. <laughs> 
All right, guys, if I missed your question, I'm so sorry. I just didn't want to make this super, super long, and maybe we'll do another Q&A like later. Uh, let me know if you guys enjoyed it by giving this video a thumbs up. It helps me out on YouTube. It tells YouTube to show my video to more people. And yeah, if you have any other questions that like you're dying to know the answer to, leave them in the comments below, like in a comment, because I try to reply to a lot of you guys when I put these videos out. And so um, if I see any down there that I didn't answer in the video, I'll answer them for you. I'll link my baby list so you guys can check that out. I'll link a few things in the description box for you and let me know if you guys want to see the name video, uh, birth plan video, what's on my baby registry video, and if you have any other ideas of stuff that you wanna see. Let me know and we'll see in the next one. I'm gonna go wash this off. I swear it's like dried into my soul now. It's like so, st <laughs> it's like so sticky. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.